What's up, I'm Vin and today I wanna to share with you some tips on how to get a 100 on a math test. Tip number one, know every definition, formula, and theorem that will be on your test. You wanna make sure that you're showing up to the test and you're able to just recite any definition, formula, and theorem that may appear. So let's say you had a test coming up and the test was all about circles. I would make sure to write or print out every definition, formula, and theorem that's on that test and I would rehearse everything until I was able to read it back quickly without the use of notes. If you wanna get a 100 on your math test, you need to be able to recall all that information quickly when you're actually at the test. Tip number two, practice skill-based questions to build up speed. When you're taking a math test, it's very important that you're able to finish the questions within the time that's actually given to you. So your skills and technique should be absolutely sharp on test day. You wanna be able to practice these questions until you're completely fluent. It's not enough to just be able to get these questions correct. You're going to have to be able to do these questions within the time that's given to you. So you wanna make sure that you're able to do them fast. Now, I'm not saying here that you should be able to rush through your test and finish the test super early. I'm just saying that the skill-based questions are ones that you should be able to do fast because you're gonna need that extra time to work on the more challenging questions. Which brings us to tip three, practice application-based questions and word problems. These are typically the hardest questions on the test, but you need to be able to do these questions correct to get a 100. So make sure that you're incorporating these type of questions in your practice. And now this quote really highlights the mindset you wanna have for these questions. I absolutely love this quote. You give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend four hours sharpening the ax. Plenty of times I've seen students attempt questions like this and their mistake is that they just jump way too fast into these questions. But remember, these questions are more of a patience game. The skill-based questions that we were talking about earlier, if you're able to do those quickly, that puts time in the bank so that you could spend more time thinking on the challenging questions in this part of the test. Tip number four, beware of the Dunning-Kruger effect. This psychological phenomenon shows that people will overestimate their level of effectiveness when in reality, they need way more practice just to realize how much they don't know before they could achieve any level of mastery. So if you wanna get that 100, you have to be honest and ask yourself, how well prepared are you for this exam? Think about how you're going to be scored at the test. If your teacher provides rubrics, do your solutions have each component that's needed for you to get full credit when you write it down on the paper on test day? And if your answer to that question is no, you're not ready yet, then you have to make sure that you're practicing and paying attention to how you're gonna be scored. So that way, when you get to the test, you write down everything that needs to be there for you to get that 100. Tip number five, fix your mistakes. There's two main types of errors that you can make in math. There's computational errors, also known as silly mistakes. And these mistakes are totally normal and they happen at every level of math. And when these happen, this just might mean that you need to take a short break from your practice, go out, take a walk, and then come back to your studies with a fresh mind. But the second type of mistake that you could make, the conceptual errors, those are a little bit more worrisome. And that means that there's just something missing in your understanding of the math. And that's gonna keep you from getting that 100. It's not enough to just have these formulas on retainer. You wanna know when it's appropriate to use those. So if necessary, you're going to have to go back and repair your foundation because math is a subject that builds. If you're missing some of the previous skills that you need to know, then that's gonna hold you back when you're learning future math and you're gonna have to go back and repair your foundation. Otherwise, it's gonna be really tough for you to get those 100s. I've had plenty of calculus students complain about a question and then when I actually go to look at the work and what they're struggling with, they're struggling with the algebra and their calculus is perfect. So if you're missing some of the skills from the prior levels of math or the current level, make sure that you're going back and fixing those errors. You're building those skills so that you show up ready on test day. Tip number six, connect your math. When you're learning new math, it's very important that you try to connect it to the math that you already know. So let's say you were learning the distance formula. In a situation like this, you wanna find the distance between the points three, one, and six, five. So you have the distance formula, you apply it correctly, and you get the correct answer. But there's another way to do this. And you look at the distance formula and ask yourself, when have you seen the sum of two squares before in a situation where you're trying to find a missing side? And that might make you think of the Pythagorean theorem. And if you notice here, when you're trying to find the missing length here, you could build up this segment here into a right triangle. The legs are gonna have lengths three and four, which you could just count the boxes. And then instead of using that distance formula, you could just use the Pythagorean theorem and you'll get the same exact answer. Connecting all of your math together is gonna to help you gain a better conceptual understanding of the subject, and it's also gonna help you with retaining the information when you need to recall it at a later date. And now for the final tip, tip number seven, change your identity. There's this great book by James Clear called Atomic Habits, and I'm not gonna read you this whole book, but there's one small part of this book that really holds true for math. So after you read this quote, I want you to think about what type of math student do you consider yourself to be? 
And if you want to affect any sort of change in your life and become that better math student, decide the type of math student that you want to be. So see yourself as that student that does get 100s on exams. And think about what is it going to take for you to become that student? So then that will start to motivate you to make that lifestyle shift and make the changes in your habits that will slowly move you in that direction. 